morning. Welcome to this fourth lecture of this week where we are learning this uh, software for whole building simulation. And in the previous lecture, we have already created the building geometry. We have input the activity schedules, we have input the different parameters related to the activity of the building which is going to be performed in the building. We have already put in the parameters related to the construction of the building. So, we already have put in the values for the walls, roof, windows, openings and also the design of the openings as far as uh, its distribution is concerned which is window wall uh, ratio. So, today we will be looking at uh, the active parameters. So, we will be looking at the artificial lighting and HVAC input parameters. The all the parameters which we have done so far were either going to remain constant for the base and proposed building or they are the passive parameters, passive design parameters. Here when we are talking about artificial lighting, we will largely be talking in terms of lighting power density and when we are talking about HVAC, we will be talking about the coefficient of performance, the COP of HVAC which is going to bring in the difference between the performance of a base case and the proposed case. Now, just as we have done for the uh, construction, the materials for the base case, the values for LPD and COP for a base case come directly from the codes. So, here again the relevant code is ASHRAE 90.1 or we can take the values from ECBC whichever is relevant. So, we directly depending upon the type of the building and usage of the building, we will take these uh, prescriptive values from the codes and put them in. So, let us see how do we input all these values in uh, our software and in the model that we have created so far and we are continuing with the same model. I just hope that you have already created the building and you are following the steps along with me. It does not necessarily need to be an office building and the same uh, building that I am creating, you can pick up any drawing, you can pick up any building and you can continue to create it with me. I reiterate if you have any problems, kindly write to me, I will try to respond back immediately so that you do not have problems. In addition, there are ample uh, uh, tutorials which are available, you can simultaneously take help of that, but in case of any problem come back to us. So, let us switch to the uh, software screen now and let us input the uh, parameters related to lighting and HVAC. So, in the previous three lectures, we have already created this building geometry where we have defined the activities, we have also defined the construction. So, I have already shown you the process and I for your reference, I have changed the walls to ECBC wall where the U value, you can quick check it, the U value has been uh, set as 0 0.4 which is prescribed in ECBC. I have taken the copy of a flat roof U value where the U value has been prescribed to 0 0.33 which is as per the ECBC again. And in the openings, I have changed the glazing type to ECBC glazing fenestration and if you look at the values here, I have changed it to a U value of 3.3 and a solar uh, heat gain uh, value, SHGC value of 0 0.27. So, and keeping the WWR as 40 percent. So, what we have done so far is we have taken all the prescriptions as per ECBC and we have uh, given all these values as an input into this building which we are currently examining. And this is the base case. So, for base case just to remind you over and again, we will take all the prescriptive values as given in ECBC and put it in the uh, input parameters. Once we have created this uh, uh, building geometry and construction and openings, we will move on to more active uh, features. So, first one of this is lighting. So, in the lighting, a common space uh, template for an open plan office has been taken where it uses the template uh, the lighting power density of 10.5 watt per meter square which is taken as the base case in ECBC as well. So, we are taking it as uh, 10.5 watt per meter square and we are taking it as a general lighting which is on 
with a power density of uh, 10.5 and within this 10.5 the luminary type which is surface mounted and uh, the radiant fraction of it the visible fraction of it all of these have been taken now the radiant fraction of it will uh, add to the heat gain inside the building for the base case the lighting control will not be on and we will not have task or display light or process light exterior lighting also we are considering as off and we are for now we are not taking into account the uh, cost here the space use classification is space by space method and the entire building for that matter has been taken for a 10.5 watt per meter square lighting power density let us check the core so for the core also it is the same template and it is taken as 10.5 watt per meter square which is what is taken uh, even in the office toilet so the schedule although varies so the schedule for this is office toilet light because we had fixed the use of this space as a toilet however if you go to other zones the lighting schedule changes so if we want a different lighting schedule we can change it however it would not matter much because the same schedule will, will have to be taken for the proposed case as well so this is uh, how we change the lighting in all the zones here so uh, now another thing which if we look at this uh, hvac since there is no lighting control and we, and if we look at the lighting schedule and if we check it we see that the lighting is considered to be on from 7 to 18 now that is uh, it implies that 100 percent of the line lights are going to be on for complete office working time so 100 percent light will be on from 7 to morning 7 to evening 6 this is what the current schedule implies however if we are taking into account when we go on to design and simulate the proposed case and the moment we turn the lighting controls on which will imply that the lights will be on only when sufficient daylight is not being made available we can immediately see the difference that will be brought in the electricity consumption because of only adding the lighting controls so this is what uh, we will provide as an input right in the beginning for the base case the next is hvac when we are talking about H hvac automatically it has taken the template and the baseline primary system here has been taken uh, will be taken as system 3 as per the uh, ashray and when we have selected the system we go into the details of this uh, hvac system to check as per ashray if we look at the office building system 3 is prescribed and if we select this and if we set it to be used as a primary hvac system this system will be applicable to all the zone however we decided that the core is not going to be served by the HVAC system so we have checked these two core zones off and now this HVAC system will be serving all the remaining zones so once we've done this we apply it and that is how we can see that the selected HVAC system has been applied to all the zones here and it will automatically apply the HVAC system to the entire building here we can once we go into the system detail we can change the uh, coefficient of uh, performance for each of these uh, systems for the HVAC along with this we can have the mechanical ventilation heating and cooling is definitely on when we are talking about air conditioning we are talking about mechanical ventilation we can also have the uh, definitions 
for introducing the outside air it could be per person or per area or it could be the sum per area uh, per person plus uh, per area now this is dependent upon the code that we are following so if you remember uh, we were talking about nbc and which is the same as has been referred to in ecbc so minimum fresh air which is the sum per person and per area will be applicable in our case so we define the uh, outside air definition method and we can also define the operation schedule. In this case the heat recovery is not checked on, we are not taking into account the heat recovery. So the schedule of it is currently like this where it is on for most of the time during the day however the percentage of it opening is changing. So from morning 8 till evening 5 it is on 95% uh, and for the rest of the period it is varying from 0 to 30%. So that is what is the current occupancy schedule which is which, which can be seen here from the compact schedule. If we want to change it we can change it or uh, we could also uh, introduce our own schedules here. Heating and cooling are taken as uh, default systems which are coming automatically from this uh, uh, primary HVAC system which we have defined from the ASHRAE template and uh, based upon the ASHRAE appendix G the code. In case natural ventilation is on we can check it uh, on and we can also define the rates of natural ventilation. However, in this case here the building is uh, centrally air conditioned so we are not taking into account the natural ventilation. In case there are other uh, parameters features available for example the earth tube or uh, we are talking about some other environmental impact factors such as district uh, heating and we are taking into account the efficiency and COP of district heating then that will be uh, mentioned here. In this case here the base case has only these many uh, input parameters and with this our base case is fairly ready and we have almost all the systems which are uh, to be supplied for creating a complete base case model. Once we have done this we can actually visualize how the building is going to look like. So, we can see what are the different types of uh, materials which are used, we can see the different zones. So, it will give us a quick uh, overview of the building which has been created. So, once all these input parameters have been given, we can go on to individually simulate the building only for heating design or cooling design or we may go on to simulate it for an year or the peak period which will take into account the which will take into account both the cooling periods and the heating periods. So here when we start with the simulation we have to uh, define the period. So we can define it for say one year, one entire year starting from 1st January to 31st December or we could de do it only for a summer typical week or we can do it for a winter typical week or we can do it for a design week. So uh, for now let us look at the summer design week which will be used to design the systems and check their efficiencies. And uh, if we look at the output intervals of reporting, so here since we are doing it only for a week, a monthly or a run, uh, a monthly period is not required, but a run period is required. We would be interested in looking at hourly values, and uh, uh, this is what we will set here. If we go in options, it will be the time steps per hour that it takes by default is uh, 6 and the temperature control is air temperature. So here we will continue to be using the air temperature. We will include the shading from excluded zones in simulation. So support, suppose we had a component block, so we would take into account the shading from all such zones and blocks here. 
We can also model all the external reflections and shading of ground reflected solar. So, uh, in case we want to look at the daylighting uh, calculations, we will definitely check this box on. In case we are not looking at uh, daylighting initially, we may just check it off for faster calculations. For base case, we are not looking at the HVAC auto sizing. In advanced, we can look at the algorithms and also uh, the algorithms which will be used for convection and warm up periods. So, uh, for now for the base case, we will keep most of these as constant because here they are there are many definitions, but there are many algorithms, but we will keep the ones which are default for now and we will keep the same for the proposed case as well. So, uh, when we are looking at warm up period, we are looking at uh, the minimum 6 warm up days before the system uh, achieves certain temperatures and the uh, envelope is heated. So, warm up days are the days where the building would have been simulated for these many days and the structure would have gained enough warmth to take into account the heat exchange because of the envelope. So, all this is included in the advanced details for the uh, simulation. We can also look at the output, what all do we require in output. So, we may uh, want building and block zone, uh, block output of zone data. We may want to include the unoccupied zones, we may want to allow custom outputs. For here, right now, we want only the uh, building and block output of zone data. When we are talking about energy, we are looking at the heat gains including solar, energy, HVAC, etc., the latent loads. We are not including the surface heat uh, uh, transfer right now. It will not be reported. It is only the output, but for calculations, for analysis purpose, it is definitely there already. When we are talking about the uh, comfort and environmental, uh, we are looking at the environmental parameters that is for uh, the air temperature, the solar radiation, the heat gains and all. We may want to look at any other. So, suppose we are looking at Fanger uh, comfort model, we can do that. We can look at the adaptive ASHRAE uh, standard 55 or simple standard ASHRAE standard 55 uh, data as well for the given building. So, what is the comfort level based upon this? However, here since we are concerned about the energy consumption and we will be comparing the energy consumption of base case with the proposed case, that is how uh, uh, only the energy parameters matter more and we will check only those in. More is the number of parameters, more is the time it takes to simulate because all these uh, output parameters will have to be calculated. In case we want detailed daylight outputs, we will have to check this on. So, day, uh, daylight map output and also daylight factor, illuminance and glare data. We may want summary tables with uh, the summary output units currently in kilowatt hour. We may change it to megajoules or gigajoules depending upon what the requirement is, what the scale of the building is. So, for small buildings, we would usually keep it at kilowatt hour. So, when we are looking at the annual reports, so if we look at all these uh, output parameters, so these are the parameters which will be provided in the summary. So, if we do not want some of these, we may just check them off. If we want a couple of them, we may want them in the report. So, depending upon what is it that you require, you may just go through each one of these and turn them, turn them on or off. So, same is for monthly reports, if we want more of them, we can just check them on. We can also look at some miscellaneous outputs, if at all we want that, so that also we check. So, once we have done that and we click OK, the system will automatically start. simulating the building for the given simulation data. 
clicked on the simulation and for the given uh, requirements of the output for simulation. This is the kind of screen that uh, we would uh, get. So this has, uh, this is on a daily interval. If we have an hourly interval, we would, we have already generated the hourly data for a summer week, which is how we simulated it. And we have got for temperature, radiance, uh, the heat balance, the overall fresh air which has been received, the fuel consumption for uh, different purposes for lighting, for fans, for cooling and room electricity. So this is what we have uh, achieved for uh, a week. We can also look at it in grid or graph and table where we can also look at these values. We can look at the daily distribution, we can look at the weekly distribution, here the monthly will not uh, work, sorry we cannot look at the weekly distribution, we can look at the monthly uh, distribution, but since we simulated only for 7 days it will not work here. So uh, we can only look at it in grid format or table format, but we usually it is easier for us to apprehend it in a, a graphical format and for uh, whatever uh, bandwidth for whatever interval you want to look at it. So th this is what will come. So in the next lecture we will see how to understand and analyze this data and uh, then we will move on to simulating the proposed case in comparison with the base case. So we will close it here for now, see you again tomorrow. And I hope by uh, tomorrow you would have been able to simulate the buildings that you have started with. So thank you for being with us, see you again tomorrow, bye bye.